Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm back. And I am excited. I just came from the 114th Holy Convocation of the Church of God in Christ. And uh, we had a marvelous time. I enjoyed being in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, hearing from our presiding bishop, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and all of the wonderful speakers who spoke preach the word of God during the Holy Convocation. Yours truly got a chance to be a part of some uh, interesting discussions uh, ranging from man talk to talking about social justice issues. And I enjoyed every minute of it. My colleague in the men's ministry of the Church of God of Christ, Bishop Michael B. Golden Jr., he was the keynote speaker on Men's Day. God used him in a mighty way, and I thank God for that man of God. And on this past Sunday, uh, Bishop, uh, our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Shear, ministered the word of the Lord. And my friends, I want you to know, while I was there, I got a chance to just get poured into and to pour into some people. Our presiding bishop preached. We had a marvelous time. God used him, and it was a great time. And I'll tell you, I could hardly walk two or three steps without people coming up to me, thanking me for the word of God, encouraging me, saying, man of God, stay on the wall. I want to say to those who spoke those words of encouragement, uh, your words were not in vain. It blessed me in a mighty way. And even the members of the church, if they learn nothing else, and we had quite a few from the upper room who were at the convocation, if they learn nothing else, they learn that I was telling the truth when I said to the saints, listen, when people tune in, they're not just watching me. They're not just listening to the word. They're watching you too. They see your expressions. They see your face and uh, how the saints were just readily recognized by the wonderful people at the convocation. It was a tremendous time. And I thank God now, now, now I want to read something to you. And I want to, I want to, I want to I give you another reason why the man is so excited today. The Bible says in Psalms 34, you know, that powerful Psalm, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall be continually in my mouth. He says, and my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Psalms 34 verse one and two, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. The humble, the afflicted, the humble, those who are going through the humble, those who are a uh, uh, challenged, the humble, those who may be about to give up the humble, those who need to hear of the goodness of the Lord. Well, I have something good to say this Sunday, this coming Sunday, this Sunday, the very Sunday where we will celebrate veterans day. Uh, we don't get to celebrate it on the uh, uh, actual date because we're at the convocation. But we always remember uh, the veterans here because they are the best of us. We enjoy, we enjoy freedoms that we would not have were it not for these brave men and women who risk everything uh, uh, for our safety so that we can enjoy this wonderful country and participate in the experiment called America. And there are many, there are many who we cannot celebrate, we can honor and remember, because they paid the full cost, the full measure of valor by giving their own lives. But Sunday, we will definitely acknowledge and celebrate our veterans. But there is something else that uh, that means so much to me. And you're going to see it on the screen, a great big 45, 45, 45. Well, what are you talking about, Bishop? 45. This coming Sunday, oh my, the 11th, uh, the 20th of November, the 20th of November, the 20th of the 11th month in the year, year of our Lord 2022 will mark my 45th birthday in the Lord. It will mark 
the fact that God has kept me saved, that the Lord has been faithful to my life, that the God of the Bible has been there to hear my cry, to pick me up, to turn me around. His providence has been there. When I went astray, he brought me back on course. When I was down, he comforted me. He's wiped tears from my eyes. He's healed my body. He's blessed me immeasurably. He blessed me with a wonderful wife. He's blessed me with a wonderful family, a wonderful daughter, a wonderful son. He's blessed me with a wonderful son-in-law. He's blessed me with wonderful grandchildren. He's blessed me to live in this great country. He's blessed me to still have my mother in the land of the living. He's blessed me to be the proud pastor of the upper room church of God in Christ. He has blessed me to be the prelate of North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Oh, he's been so good to me. He's blessed me, my friends. Oh, we're on the other side of Kojic. Uh, the other side of COVID, excuse me. And I'm sitting here today and I have my health and I have my strength. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Jesus did it. The Lord promised me an Asa blessing. The eyes of the Lord runs to and forth throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward the Lord. And I want you to know God has done just that. Oh, I'm sitting here. I've never been vaccinated. I've never been boosted. Uh, no, and those who have, God bless you. But I chose a different route. And uh, with consultation from my doctor, he told me, wouldn't given your age and your health, you had a 1% chance, about a 15% chance of catching COVID and a 1% chance of going to the hospital. I said, Doc, I'll take my chances. I'll trust God. And I'm sitting here today. Praise God. And the Lord has been good to me. And I'm alive and well, and I thank God for that. I have so much to thank him for. For 45 years, Brother Gary, the Lord has been faithful to me. I didn't keep myself. I couldn't have kept myself. But Jesus kept me. And I'm going to celebrate Sunday. I want to acknowledge it's a milestone. It's my milestone. It's between me and the Lord. But perhaps there's somebody out there watching today, and you're thinking about giving up. You're wondering, is it all worth it? You're wondering, can you make it? Well, I'm here to tell you, we're 45 years, almost 45 years under my belt that God is a keeper. And as you know, I'm 61 years old. And that means for me, 74% of my life, for 74% 74 of my life, I've been saved. Ah, I've been walking with Jesus. And I tell you, the only thing I change is I, I wish I were giving him 75%, 76%. 80%, 90%, so forth and so on. But he saved me at the tender age of 16 and he has kept me and I'm going to celebrate, praise the Lord, and make a big deal out of it because to me, it's a big deal. God is a keeper. Now, I missed you last week. I missed you. I miss uh, being able to talk to you. You know, the midterms have taken, taken place and uh, the, the, the big red wave that some predicted uh, did not take place, but thank God uh, what took, thank God that the things that took place took place, and there we have uh, divided government. I'm, I'm always in favor of that, you know, uh, where you, you're able to keep a check on this, this power because we're living in a wicked day, you know. Uh, some people are arguing today. There are elected officials saying, well, we need to keep the borders open. We need to uh, bring in uh, more and more people from other countries to help with our workforce. We need the borders open. And, 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 and those same people are saying we need abortion in demand. Praise the Lord. We need to, we need to make sure every woman who wants to abort their baby uh, should be able to do so. So on one hand, you're saying we need workers. But on the other hand, you're saying let's kill them. That makes no sense to me. None whatsoever. So I'll tell you what, we have not changed. I believe that all human life is sacred and that God is the giver of life. And my friends, as never before, I want to thank God. Let me regress a little bit and go back to the convocation. I want to thank God for the happy warriors.
the Happy Warriors, uh, and you've probably seen some of the footage that we put up on uh, out there on social media. The Happy, we had a booth uh, at the convocation, and we were the only group at the booth that had nothing to sell. None of our products were, were for sale, but our caption was, we have nothing to sell but life to give away. And oh, over 150, over 150 people took, uh, uh, said that they wanted, we, we, we had more people obviously to stop by and to listen, but over 150 people said that they wanted to start a chapter, a pro-life chapter in their church, in their city, to, to begin to fight this fight for the unborn. And I praise God for that. And I make my boast in the Lord for these things. Now, I'm talking about Sunday. I'm talking about what happened with these uh, midterms. I'm, I'm talking about the, the convocation. But my friends, I want to talk just a little bit, and I'm, I'm getting ready to cut it out. I'm just, I, look, I missed you. I missed being able to sit here and talk to you. I miss uh, being able to come into your homes. I, I miss you. You know, I, I, I know I can't see you, but you know, there is a connection in the spirit. I feel you and I praise God for you and I, I can feel your prayers and I pray that you know that I'm praying for you. I am excited about tonight, tonight, tonight. The Lord literally spoke to me on the plane. Well, you know what? The night before, Pam and I took off to, to go to Memphis, which was uh, that would have been Sunday night before last, the God of the Bible spoke to me and told me where to preach from this coming, for this coming Thursday night. And, uh, and you know, that, that's, that's a wonderful comfort because that tells me a, a, a few things. Number one, it tells me that God's going to let us live and come back and that the plane's not going to crash because he's already given me a word and told me what to preach. He's not going to tell me what to preach if he's not going to let me live to preach it. And, uh, and, it, and it says to me that God's going to bless you to hear it. So I'm, I'm just so excited. And he told me where to preach from. And uh, I'm, 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 man, I'm chomping at the bit. I'm ready to walk in the word of the Lord and, 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 and talk to you uh, from the, the, the scriptures, from the word of God. And I want you to know, my friends, that I love you with the love of the Lord. And I want to encourage you uh, to be thankful. You know, Thanksgiving is next Thursday. Be thankful. And we'll talk to you more about that. But you know, here we have this, uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Gary may get on me, but you know, here we have that big Thanksgiving day service. And uh, where we come out uh, around 10 and for two hours, we're here uh, churching in the name of Jesus and God's going to bless us in a mighty way. And I, like you, have so much to be thankful for. If for no other reason than God blessed you to survive the plan pandemic. You have so much to be thankful for. And our hearts go out to those who suffered losses during that time. But that you are alive and able to mourn is something to thank God for. The truth is, the God of the Bible, even in the worst of times, with disasters happening, storms coming through, homes being destroyed, lives being lost, even though, during those time, times, God is better to us than we deserve. The Bible declares that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. They are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God is so good. And in this sinful world that we're living in, someone said to me one day, preacher, what about the storms? What about the natural disasters? Why, if God is such a loving God, does God allow these things to happen? My reply was, God shows his love that these things don't happen every day. 
two and three times a day. When you consider the sin of the world and how men have turned their backs on God, how we reject his love and reject his mercy. We pay no attention to sunshiny days, cool breezes, beautiful sunsets, beautiful moonlit nights. We pay no attention to the beauty of the sunrise. We pretend as though we don't even notice the beautiful changes of the seasons. Ah, oh, my friends, God made a wonderful world. And when we just look past all of these things and some people on their way to do mischief, don't even see the, the mercy of God and the Lord saying, don't do it, don't do it. And uh, we just ignore him. He would be justified if we had major storms every day. And yet we see his goodness. We see his glory. So I'm telling you, you, you have so much to be thankful for. I have so much to be thankful for. I could go back to my list and just begin to go down the litany of things. I thank God for Brother Gary, who helps me here on our broadcast. He's a fantastic man of God. I thank God for the officers of our great church. I thank God for my brothers who are alive and well. My sister, uh, who is alive and well. I just have so much. There's so much. I, and, and you have. The point is, we have so much to be thankful for. Don't you be one of those people. Well, I don't have much to thank the Lord for. I don't, I don't see what the Lord has done for me. Well, your eyes must be closed and your ears must be stopped up and your, your brain ain't working. You got a serious fog going on. God's good and worthy to be praised. Now, I, look at me. Look at me. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. I don't want to be all over the place, but, but look, I missed you guys. I'm telling you. And when I'm not here, I miss you. But I thank God for good help. Weren't you blessed by the preaching of Elder Robert Williams on last Sunday? Thank God for Elder Williams. Uh, he's a he's a tremendous man of God, a tremendous preacher. And uh, this past Sunday, he ministered the word of the Lord with power and authority. And I know you enjoyed last Thursday, uh, uh, Elder Josiah Evans. That young man is a special young man, and he's part of our uh, uh, the podcast of our youth that that our youth have here at the church. He's he's got a brilliant mind. He's just a, an amazing young man, and God has blessed us with so many uh, amazing people here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. So join me here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for <laughs> Bible study. <laughs> yes, sir. Bible study. And you're going to be taught the Bible by a man who's been saved almost 45 years. Thank God for his keeping power. Now, you go on out and make it a, a, a fantastic day. But uh, every time 45 come to your mind, pray for me and just rejoice in the Lord on my behalf. And I'm rejoicing in the Lord uh, for, for you and whatever your time is, keep up with your time. You keep up with your natural birthdays, don't you? Keep up with your spiritual birthday. Well, Pastor, I don't have a spiritual birthday. Just say you don't remember it and ask God to give you a date as close as, you know, uh, as possible. Because uh, if you don't have one, you know what that means, right? That means you were never, you've never been born again. So you may want to come to church tonight and we'll pray and lead you to Christ and your, your, your day will start, your birthday will start tonight. Uh, but uh, uh, you have, there has to be a spiritual birthday. For Jesus said to Nicodemus and to you and to me, you must be born again. I was born again on November the 11th, November the 20th, the 20th. 1977, around 1.30, maybe 2 o'clock. You know, we churched longer back then uh, at the Temple Church of God in Christ on South Stewart Street in Rockingham, North Carolina, under the ministry of the late, great James Henry Turner. Oh, my. Back in those days, I got to go. But back in those days, you get saved and church starts at, at the morning, morning service starts at 11. And we get out about 2.30, 3 o'clock sometimes for have an afternoon service and, and then come back for the Sunday night service. And if you miss 
either of them, someone would ask you the next time you come to the church, next time you attend service, we missed you Sunday night. <laughs> and that's the way it was. And it was wonderful. And it has, has had a profound effect on me. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. 45 years saved. My God, 74% of my life with Jesus. Gary, we're going to take it out. Praise the Lord. I'll see you tonight. God, thank you, Jesus.